Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I'm going to give you a high-level overview of blockchains. Blockchain is the basis behind Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies. But it is so much more than that. It might even save your house from being demolished. Blockchain's history even goes further back, beyond Bitcoin. The first proposal for a blockchain-like system was in David Chalm's dissertation, Computer Systems Established, Maintained and Trusted by Mutually Suspicious Groups. This was then built on by Stuart Haber and W. Scott Stornetta in 1991, and further enhanced by Haber and Stornetta and Dave Bayer to make a system where timestamp documents couldn't be tampered with. Then, in 2008, in the midst of the global financial crisis, a person or group using the name Satoshi Nakamoto released a nine-page paper detailing a system known as Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, and a year later it was implemented on the internet. The point of the currency is to be a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash, with no central authority backing it. Most financial transactions we undertake are based on trust. With cash, everybody knows the transaction has happened and there's concrete proof. For electronic transfer, we trust the bank to keep a record of our transactions. We trust PayPal to send the money from our account to the people we're buying from. Everything is stored in a giant ledger and we trust the owner of that ledger to do the right thing. A peer-to-peer -peer system that is public has an issue. What if I make some sort of transaction and then erase the record of that transaction? The system breaks. This is called the double spend problem. Blockchain gets around this and replaces trust in an entity with cryptographic proof instead. I'm not going to get too complicated here, but basically the idea is that transactions are grouped together in a block and the blocks are chained together and encrypted with each block building the chain. That encryption forms a unique fingerprint. The strength of the chain comes from having the cryptographic fingerprint, called the hash, of the previous transaction as the seed for the next transaction, or block, so that any tampering will affect every block from that point on. At the same time, the whole network is distributed, so there is no one central keeper. Everyone has a copy of the full chain. No one can add or alter a record without it being obvious to all of the rest of the machines on the network, which will then reject that chain. But it's not all about money. In fact, the 1992 implementation by Haber, Stornetta and Bayer was all about verification of document timestamps. There are now industries using blockchains in just about every sector, from financial services to supply chain and even gaming. Any ledger or database can be a blockchain, and over time many of them probably will be. It's all well and good to have a great database, but a database that you can trust completely and know who made every change to is next level useful. In 2016, The Economist reported on Mariana Catalina Izaguirre, a woman in Honduras who was evicted from her home that she had lived in for three decades in 2009. She even had an official title to the land, but the records at the country's property institute showed a different owner, and that owner convinced a judge to sign an eviction order. By the time the legal confusion was sorted out, Miss Izaguirre's house had been demolished. The Honduran government back in 2016 was looking into a blockchain-based land registry to clean up these sorts of messes. Hopefully they've got something sorted out by now. Well, that's blockchain in a nutshell. Question of the day. Are you interested in blockchain? Does it make any sense whatsoever? Should I dive deep into the encryption and technology? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this episode useful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos that you may not have seen before here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here 
and to our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.